Hey everyone, this is Kieran. Today's exercise is looking at how to improve the pronation of our ankle and our foot. So that's the ability for our foot to go into a position where everything comes down and relaxed, kind of like when our knee is going past our toes. It's a common issue to have after like an ankle sprain or an ankle fracture or a lower leg fracture, uh, sometimes even after knee related injuries. So if you feel like you've got this problem, an ability for this, sorry, a lack of ability for this to go down, then this would be a useful uh, video for you to watch. Just a little precursor before we get into the test and then the exercise. So just talking about what pronation is, and pronation is a triaxial movement, which means that it occurs in three different planes, and it comes from different parts of the ankle and foot complex. Now, that's relevant when we start thinking about the test that we're gonna show you, because the test is non-specific. And so what that means is the test doesn't tell us where the restriction is coming from necessarily, it just tells us that it's something about the pronation that is restricted. So pronation first, if we think about what dorsiflexion is, so it's going to be this talocrural joint here. As my tibia goes forward like this, so that means the knee, which was here, has now come forward towards the toes. That's dorsiflexion, okay? So that's our sagittal plane movement. Then we have a frontal plane movement, and what that is is eversion of the foot, so the rear foot and the midfoot. And if you look from the back, you can see there's a joint here, the subtalar joint between the talus and the calcaneus. And as I evert, so this heel bone is gonna come out to the side here. So it comes outside like that. The midfoot as well also comes like this, okay? The transverse plane movement is at the forefoot here and we get abduction. And so what happens is, is the toes come like this. So if you're looking straight down, the toes would come sideways like this. Now, the midline is between the big toe and the second toe. So that means the big toe is gonna to go this way. So you get a splaying, a spreading out of the toes, okay? Now, when you think about the arches, now with this arch here in the front, in the forefoot, means that that is going to flatten out like this. And you also have this arch here in the inside, and that means that also is gonna flatten out like this. And then you've got one on the outside here, which also flattens out. Now, this is a normal movement. It gets, I think, uh, a bad reputation. Um, the issue becomes more whether you can enter it or exit it. So if you can't enter it, then you're missing a phase of what the foot needs to go through to basically um, <clears throat> start the chain of taking shock or impact. And then those ground reaction forces go up through the foot and up through the leg and the rest of the body. What you can see a lot is that part of that pronation complex gets restricted. So maybe someone loses flexibility or mobility in the midfoot here, or the forefoot, and you see an excessive amount of movement then happening at the talocrural joint. Now you may not be able to visually see that, maybe it's symptomatic, someone says, oh, I've always got tight calves, or you know, I've always got a uh, tight Achilles, but then when you check the movement out, they've actually got quite good range. So maybe they're at the very end of their flexibility and they're trying to push it more. That still feels tight, it doesn't mean short, right? Maybe someone has restriction in the talocrural joint after a, a particular type of Weber fracture and they have an inability for that tibia to go forward and you start to see the toes start to come sideways or maybe you see a, a pronation, uh, sorry, a, an eversion through the midfoot and you see more of a permanency of that midfoot staying down and it doesn't want to come up through its full range because it's compensating for this lack of movement here. So the reason I talk about all that is because it's just to give you a sense that the restrictions can be in a few different places. And like I said, the foot, there's a lot of bones here, a lot of joints, so a lot of potential for loss of movement. And when we do this next test, we can't say exactly where the restriction's coming from. Now you might be able to say that I've had an injury in this spot, so likely the restriction's there. If you go through and you do the stretch afterwards though, and you feel like there's not a continued benefit of increased range, then it's worth seeing your local health professional and uh, getting them to be a little more specific about where the restriction is. So that could involve specific manual therapy to certain joints. It could involve specific exercises to try and encourage the soft tissue to, to lengthen and shorten under load. Um, or it might need some strengthening, for example, to just get those tissues tolerant of your own body weight again so that they're happy to, to lengthen under load.
Um, so a bit of information, but important and something to consider. Um, supination we'll talk about in a different video, um, and that's basically a reverse of everything in the same areas and a more of a rigidity of the foot. Okay. So let's get into our wall, uh, doors, uh, sorry, pronation test, and uh, you guys can use that to see if you're restricted or not. As I said before, this test is non-specific, okay? So you're doing it to get a sense of if there's a general loss of the pronation ability. And like I said, if you've had some previous injuries, you might get an indication of where that restriction is coming from. If not, you can be uh, non-specific in your approach to improve it as well. So there's always the benefit there. Um, just to give you an idea, I use a nice app here called a clinometer. It's basically a an inclinometer it gives us a degrees. There's lots of ways of doing this test. Some measure a distance from the wall. I personally like this because it's just a little less um, cumbersome and there's less tools involved. It's always better to get someone to measure it for you just because your positioning might change the degrees that show up. That being said, it's probably not going to be a significant amount. It just depends on how, restriction, how restricted you are. So to give you an idea, you can see there's some degrees there. Right? and we're gonna put that on our shin. So I'm gonna pop over here to the wall and you're gonna lose my head for a second, but the focus is down below, right? So I'm gonna line up like this. And the reason I'm doing it up here is because to be here, it means that I'm weight bearing, which is important because this is when we express this range. I'm gonna bend both knees forward, but I'm interested mainly in this back one. And I'm really interested in how far can this knee go forward I want to keep my heel on the ground, okay? And I'm going to bring this guy and put it on the front of my shin down here. And I can see that I get about sort of 50, 50, 51 degrees. Now, if I do the other side, I'm looking to see if it's different. So I'm going to pop down, pop this on my shin and Similar, 50, 51 degrees. So what I'm looking for there is, is there a difference side to side? If it's within five degrees, that tends to be kind of acceptable. But if it is beyond that, so you see some people sometimes have like a 20 degree, 25 degree difference after a fracture, and you've got a nice measurable thing to keep track of. And you can use this app to, um, I guess, measure your progress. So I'd be checking it probably every week or two weeks. And you know, know that if you get a couple degrees every time of improvement, that's quite a lot. And over 10 weeks, that could be 20 degrees, right? So just thinking about more of a long-term change here. All right, let's get into the stretch. So the setup here is you need a step and then you need a weight. And we're gonna set it up in a way that encourages that pronation stuff we were talking about. So we're gonna put ourselves, our lower limb, in a position that is already biased towards pronation. And then we're gonna use the weight to help encourage the lengthening of those tissues. So what that means is, and I'll grab my step here, is I need to create the transverse movement. So I'm gonna turn my foot out like this, and then I need to create some eversion. So I'm gonna move my shin out to the side here. So relative to the heel, I'm everted. And then I need to create a dorsiflexion. So my knee has gone forward, okay? That means that that tibia has gone translated forward. Now I've got 20 kilos here. It doesn't have to be 20. What you're actually looking for is a weight that feels helpful. Helpful in terms of my range is improving or I feel stretched. Sometimes a weight can be too much for the tissue to tolerate. And that means you need to go lower in weight to help encourage the stretch, all right? So, Let's get into this position here. So I've turned my foot out. I have everted my heel. And now I'm going into this dorsiflexion position. I'm gonna pop this on my knee. And I'm just gonna hold. And you're gonna hang out here for anywhere 30 seconds to 90 seconds until you feel like you've had an adequate stretch. And I'm putting the, the step, I'll show you another angle in a second, but the step is kind of sitting around the midfoot and it just gives me a sense of there's more pressure going from the midfoot into the step. And I know that there's some lengthening going on there of the tissues. And you just hold and hold and hold and, and just relax. Now you might find you need more weight. You might need 40 kilos. Some of these tissues are pretty robust, particularly if the injury has been around for a long time. 
Okay? Pretty straightforward and you should feel a good stretch. I'm getting one sort of down through my medial malleola here, so I'm getting like a lengthening of my toe flexors and my big toe flexor, that's some of them. A little bit of tib post as well, potentially. Nice, now I'm starting to get a little bit tired. So I'm gonna exit there. Okay, so pretty straightforward stretch. The setup is important to maximize the stretch, but as long as you feel a stretch as well, then that's useful. After doing the stretch, so go back to the wall, retest your flexibility and see if that's better. And over time, you're gonna chip away at this. I'd be doing this two, three times a week. I'd be doing three to five sets of 30 to 90 seconds. And you're finding a, a, a dosage of volume that increases your range. If you do that amount and you still feel like the range isn't improving, you could try adding an extra day. If you feel like the range is improving, you could try and reduce a day and see if less of a dosage gives you that change. And as you get the range back, you're gonna to start to use it in your daily activities, squatting, lunging, stairs, walking up and down hills, and that'll keep reinforcing the range as well. So you've got some sort of comfort in knowing that your daily activities will also utilize this as you improve the range. So, really nice, really common uh, range restriction and a very practical way to just assess, try to improve it and then reassess. And it's important to have that before and after, okay? And that way you can keep track. And usually what you keep track of is what tends to improve. Uh, so let me know if you guys like this. I don't tend to do as much uh, sort of stretching type videos. Um, more that I find stretching under load is a little more useful and that typically can just be doing an exercise through the fully whatever range is available it doesn't mean that stretching is not useful um, so if you like the stretching videos let me know and I can always do some more uh, but this is probably the, of the stretches I do prescribe this is tends to be one of the more common ones so I hope you guys liked it uh, definitely leave some comments below if uh, you have any questions or found it helpful um, and I'll get back to you if you like this video then please hit like below Otherwise, to check out more of our content in the future, you can subscribe to our channel by clicking our logo over here. And to check out our latest video, click up here.